Hi, this is Samuel Tansoft. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to get started in Handsoft. So let's start with the first one, which is how you structure things. If we look at this project, you can see that I've created a root node, which is a very smart thing to do because that helps to collapse. If you want to find things, having a deep hierarchy just makes it easier. I commonly see people having a long, long flat list of items, which makes it very hard to scroll down through it. So build a deep hierarchy. Now, the question is, how do you think about it when building a deep hierarchy? I mean, there's several ways to go about it. We're looking at the schedule here, and you can see that I've chosen to structure it first on the top. I have the releases of this project. And then I've also structured each of uh, the releases as one bucket. So you can see here we have release one where each of the two or the two teams have a bucket by themselves where they have the sprints. So this is one way to go about it, to structure it by release. This also allows us to do a rolling archive mentality, which means that we can archive the future items. We can still build them just to have them ready. But we can archive them so that when people get into the schedule, they can just see what's current. We can always bring items back from the archive by just choosing Show Archived. And if we want to take them out of the archive, we can just right click and choose a Remove from Archive. If we go into the backlog, we can see here that I've given three examples of how you can structure the backlog. The first one is a feature-based structure. So here we can see that we have, a once again, a root node, the product, and then we have the features underneath here. And within each of these features, we have the user stories. The second approach is to structure according to ownership. So in this case, this is a product owner-based backlog. And in this particular example, I assume that we have a product owner per team. And then we can use a feature called delegation, like this. So we can delegate team one to the product owner of team one, which is this case is product owner Jill. And we can do the same for team two. So now we have delegated each of these buckets to the product owners. And in there, they have their features that they're owning. This brings up a valid po or important point here. Delegation is like giving main manager rights to a section within the backlog or the project schedule. I usually recommend that you only have one main manager per project. The main manager is responsible for the whole structure of the project so that it's easy to find where things are. And then use delegation to give people rights to edit in different sections of the project. You can think of a project like a file server. You don't want everyone to have root access because then it will turn out to be a mess in the bottom of the hierarchy and you won't maintain a deep hierarchy. And the third variant here is actually a replica of what I did in the project schedule. It's the release based. So in this case, we have one bucket called unplanned, where all of the features that we intend to do in the future exist. And then as we plan our releases, we move items over to the release buckets. So in this case, we have release one. Here, we, here are the things we're planned for release two and release three. And these are three examples of how you can structure the product backlog. So the second advice I'm going to give you is to use release tagging as the first level of prioritization. And for that, I'm just going to use the feature-based backlog. So I'm going to click View Selected Only here to just carve out that portion of the backlog and go into Priority. So in here, we can see two things that I've done. First, you can see that I've tagged features to the different releases. So we can see here, these items are tagged to the release one. I'm going to sort and release here. And these items are tagged to release two and these on release three. And then I also changed the product backlog prioritization column to Moscow. This is just a personal preference. There's a lot of other naming conventions you can use for prioritizations. Uh, to do that, you can just create a 
custom column like this one and enter the choices or the wording you want to use for prioritization and just add it to the project's product backlog. And uh, yeah, finally, uh, you also need to set the product to uh, product backlog to use the Moscow column as priority if you want to use drag and drop. What you also can see here then is that I've only prioritized the latest release. So my thought here is that you use the release tag to kind of say, we plan to do these features in this release, and then these features in that release, and then these in the third release. Whereas we only go into detail to talk prioritize one, the next upcoming release. So the third advice I'm going to give you is to simplify the interface. I often come out to places where they have a lot of columns. And then you can see here, I have only five columns apart from the name. Let's go into hierarchy here. The thing is that the more columns you have, the more it'll cost to maintain the backlog. And if you have 20, 30 columns, it'll just be a lot of data that you need to input for each item. And after a while, you just stop inputting this. So each of these columns just becomes noise. And it's going to be hard to read the backlog. And you'll have so much information in there that well, it's just not going to be readable. Sure, there are cases where you need a couple of extra columns. In most of those cases, not everyone needs to be exposed to these columns. What you can use then is a feature called Manage Views of Your Presets. You can create a new preset and, for example, choose a group of people. Let's select Team 1 here. Let's call it Team 1 Preset. Like that. And then you can choose which columns you want to show. So let's say that we just want to show the status and the release tag and prioritization and estimation. But we, we want to hide this the committed sprint. And you can also choose which items you want to show down here in the item settings window. And you can also choose which flags you want to turn on. After you've done this, you can just choose to apply the presets and it will be applied to everyone so that they have a cleaner view of the project. The fourth advice I'm going to give you is to keep the backlog clean. This is one of the hardest things to do. A common mistake that people do is that they break down the backlog into tasks like this. For example, you say, uh, for this feature, we need to do some code, and we need to do some, uh, let's say, graphics. And perhaps even to more detail, you, you add which classes needs to be made, things like that. Quite rapidly, your backlog will become a very large repository of tasks. Tasks should exist in the project schedule. So the thought is that you keep backlog items at a high level. So in this case, we have user stories. And you pull them into the sprints and break that down into the different tasks. So like this, code, graphics, and so forth. And the reason for this is that you will have the backlog as a discussion ground to see where your features, your big items are, the goals. And this is the place where to look how things are moving ahead on the work side of things. Another aspect of keeping the backlog clean is to delete items continuously. It's quite common that I see buckets like this, trash, old, or similar, where you have a lot of items just lying around waiting to be deleted. Keep in mind that you have a backlog history. So if you go in here, you choose View Product Backlog History, this project is new, so I have no dates from the past. But let's say one. And let's just save this as uh, before cleanup. 
And now I can always access these to see what it looked like at a certain date. So you can select the dates and you'll see the ones with a green triangle has the actual save. You can also choose to set this to save automatically, which is by default every Monday at 6 a.m. The fifth and final advice I'm going to give you is to not run everyone in the same sprint. It's quite common that I see that all the team members are in the same sprint. This means that it's very hard to see what's going on because there's so much going on. And the usual case why people have everyone in one sprint is because the organization is too intertwined. There's so many dependencies between people. That is the problem to start resolving. Instead of putting everyone in one sprint, try to divide people up into several sprints so that you can keep a group size of around seven plus minus two because that is a good decision-making group. And also, the second thing is when you have an intertwined organization where there's a lot of dependencies between people, of course, it is a tricky thing, but most of the dependency resolution should be done in the backlog stage. And at the, te at the sprint level, most of the items, dependencies, should preferably be resolved before that. So that if this team are going to work on feature A, story one, they should have all the things ready so that they can actually work on it uninterrupted and not wait for other teams. So just to reiterate, here are the five, five advices I gave you in this video. So we got structure using a deep hierarchy, release tagging as the first level prioritization, simplifying the interface, keeping the backlog clean, and break up the team into separate sprints. Thanks for your time.